Greg from the Auburn Laser Tag Club, and it's my pleasure to bring you this in-depth look at the Laser Tag Phoenix LTX from Hasbro's Tiger Electronics. First thing we need to do is take a look at all the basic features so you know how to use your tagger. Firing the Phoenix LTX not only activates a cool laser sound, but also an internal recoil hammer, an impressive rate of fire with no overheat, a light in the back of the recoil hammer, as well as the ammo counter counting down from 10 to 0 shots in your clip. When you're firing, the ammo indicator will decrease by one shot for every time you pull the trigger. A flashing LED stands for one, whereas a solid LED stands for two. These LEDs mean that I have nine shots left in my clip. Now I have four shots left. Three, two, one, and now my clip is empty. When you've used all the shots in your clip, the Phoenix LTX will make a sound to indicate that it's time to reload. To reload, just activate the thumb switch on either side of the Phoenix to release the ammo core. To finish reloading, just pop the ammo core back in and reload is complete. The nice thing is that you can reload in the middle of a clip. You don't have to wait until your clip is empty. Also, reloading occurs about as fast as you can do it. When you're under heavy fire and you need to find some cover, activate your shields by pressing and holding the shield trigger forward of the main trigger. Shields will last up to 10 seconds at a time or release the trigger early for a shorter amount of shields. While your shields are on, your strength and ammo meters will animate. There will be a sound as well as a glowing green light in the recoil hammer. There's also a 2 second delay after you release your shields before you can activate them again. To use the shot blast, just pump the handle to load a shot. You'll hear a sound, as well as the ammo lights will blink to indicate that there is a shot blast shot loaded. The next time you pull the trigger, it'll be your shot blast. The shot blast is also hot swappable, which means you can remove it and put it back on during any game. To remove it, just push down on this lever and pull it off. The tagger makes a sound to indicate that the attachment has been removed. To put it back on, just line up the grooves and push it on. And the tagger makes a sound to indicate the attachment has been put back on. The shot blast uses two infrared LED emitters. One emitter is narrow and lands one tag. The other emitter is wider and lands two tags. Depending on the range and accuracy of your shot, the shot blast will land one, two, or all three tags in one shot. The Phoenix LTX also comes standard with a pinpoint sight. Just line up the green dot with the crosshairs, just like the Laser Tag Team Ops Virtual Scope. One nice thing is that the scope is removable. It's also powered by the Phoenix itself, so there's no accidentally leaving it on and draining your batteries in your scope. With the pinpoint sight removed, you can still use the Phoenix LTX's iron sights. The sights work just as well with or without the shot blast attachment. One thing to note is that the LTX's rail is slightly wider than an LTTO rail, which means you can't use the pinpoint sight on a laser tag team ops gun, and you cannot use a laser tag team ops virtual scope on a Phoenix LTX. It is also difficult to use a real gun scope or an airsoft scope on the Phoenix LTX. The Phoenix LTX also has a strength selector. This lets you choose between 10 and 25 tags per game. This is for the L tag game as well as the team tags game. With a 10 strength game, you have 15 seconds of shield time. With a 25 strength game, you have 30 seconds of shield time.
The Phoenix also has an indoor-outdoor selector switch. Note that this is somewhat different from the LaserTag Team-Ops indoor-outdoor switch. On the Phoenix, the indoor mode makes the receiver less sensitive. On LaserTag Team-Ops, the indoor mode makes the emitter less powerful. If you're going to play an indoor game, you should either leave it on outdoor for all taggers, or just play with the Phoenix LTX taggers. Otherwise, go outside and play outside on outdoor mode. Last but certainly not least is the Phoenix LTX's power and team selector switch. This switch allows you to turn the unit on as well as select between solo mode, which is the same as LTAG, team 1 and team 2 for the team LTAG modes. As I mentioned before, the Phoenix LTX's solo mode is the same as LaserTag Team-Op's LTAG mode. If I switch to solo, and then pull the trigger to start the 10 second countdown, I'll be able to play a LaserTag Team-Op's LTAG game with a LaserTag Team-Op's tagger. I've already set this one up to play LTAG. Good luck. I get the good luck just like with LTTO, and I can start playing. As you can see, when the Phoenix LTX is tagged, the dome flashes a red light and it makes a tagged sound. It can tag LTTO just fine. Similar to the LTTO warning sound during the last few tags, the Phoenix LTX has a sound that says, Low Life to indicate that you're on your last few tags. The Phoenix LTX's strength indicator will let you know how many hits left you have in the game. When you have more than 10 tags left, the strength indicator will remain entirely lit. When you're down to your last 10 tags, you'll see it decrease every time you take a hit. One flashing LED stands for 1. A solid LED stands for 2. This strength indicator means that I have 9 tags left. Now it indicates that I have 4 tags left. On your last tag, it will tell you that you're out and the dome will stay lit. One of the main differences between Laser Tag Team Ops and the Phoenix LTX is that the Phoenix does not have friend or foe indicators or the lock on and hit confirmations. While laser tag team ops taggers can lock on, get friend or foe information and hit confirmations from other laser tag team ops taggers, they can't get any of that from a Phoenix LTX, nor can a Phoenix get any of that from a laser tag team ops because it does not have the receiver barrel. The lack of IFF in the Phoenix LTX does not prevent them from playing games together. It just means that the Phoenix LTX won't get lock-ons and hit confirmations from the LTTO, but at the same time, because there's no IFF beacon in the Phoenix LTX, Laser Tag Team Ops won't get lock-ons and hit confirmations from them either. One of the great new features of the Phoenix LTX is the new Team LTAG mode. This lets you set up a quick team-based game so you don't have to worry about tagging your friends, but you also don't have to go through the process of hosting a game like with laser tag team ops. To choose a team L tag mode, just set your power switch to the appropriate team, team one. and pull the trigger to start the 10 second countdown. The ammo and strength indicators will do this animation to let you know that the countdown is happening. After 10 seconds, Good luck. it's time to start playing. Once you've pulled the trigger to start the countdown, you can't change what team you're on, and you can't change the strength of your tagger. Note that the color of the taggers doesn't make any difference. The blue taggers can be on Team 1 or Team 2, and the gold taggers can be on Team 1 or Team 2. Although the new Team LTAG game in the Phoenix LTX is really quick and easy and really cool to play, it's not compatible at all with the LTTO taggers. You can't tag an LTTO in LTAG mode when the Phoenix is in Team Tag mode. And you can't tag a Phoenix from an LTTO tagger. 
They just don't work together in this mode. The Phoenix LTX also has a couple of hidden features. For example, you can disable the recoil hammer by holding it with your thumb when you turn it on. This makes the system think that the hammer has been jammed and won't activate it during a game. Also, there is a hidden Team 3 selector. Just move the switch between Team 2 and Team 1 team three. and you'll get Team 3. One of the best hidden features of the Phoenix LTX is the fact that it can join a Laser Tag Team Ops hosted game. An important thing to remember about joining Laser Tag Team Ops hosted games with the Phoenix LTX is that since the Phoenix doesn't have the beacon in the dome, they can't tell when other Phoenixes are trying to join, so you have to join them one at a time. And since there's no beacon in the dome, the communication comes out the main barrel, so you have to aim directly at the host dome. When you turn on a Phoenix LTX, it immediately begins scanning for an LTTO hosted game. If you pull the trigger before it sees an LTTO hosted game, you'll be starting a LTAG or Team LTAG game. If you turn on the Phoenix LTX near an LTTO hosted game that doesn't have any teams, it will automatically join that game and the host will assign an LTX a player ID. The LEDs in the ammo indicate that this LTX is player 3. When you turn on the LTX near an LTTO hosted game that has teams, you can select solo mode to have the host assign your team, or choose your team using the power team selector on the LTX itself. In solo mode, when it sees the game, it will tell you any team, and when you pull the trigger, the host will assign your team. You can also choose Team 1, Team 2, team two or, team a three te three. or Team 3 in a three teams game. When you have your choice selected, pull the trigger to join. Make sure you're aiming at the host. Team three. The strength LEDs indicate what team I'm on, with 1, 2, or 3 LEDs for Team 1, 2, or 3 and the ammo indicator tells me what player I am on that team. One flashing LED means that I'm player one on team three. It doesn't matter what your strength selector is on. The host of the game decides what stats your tagger will have. Once all the players have joined the game, the host can begin the countdown. The 30 second countdown gives all the players time to find a hiding place before the game begins. The ammo indicator provides a visual cue as to how many seconds are left in the countdown. Each LED is worth approximately 6 seconds. During the countdown, the strength indicator reminds the player what team they're on so that they can hook up with the rest of the players on their team. When the countdown is over, the Phoenix LTX will wish you good luck. Good luck. And then it's time to start playing. Just be careful not to accidentally turn off your tagger in the middle of a game. When the game is over, the taggers will announce game over and they need to return to the host to debrief. After the game is over, if you can't get back to the host soon enough, the tagger will let you know to hurry up by telling you to find host. As soon as you get back to the host, the debriefing can commence. Remember to aim your phoenix directly at the host dome in order for it to gather the information. The phoenix dome will flash to indicate that it's being debriefed. When all the taggers are debriefed, the host will distribute the scores. To see your personal rank, pull the trigger. A single solid LED means 2, so this player got a rank of 2. To see your team rank, push the shield button. Again, in this three teams game, this player got a team rank of 2. One flashing LED on the ammo side, and none on the strength side, means this tagger got a personal rank of 1. If there were LEDs on the strength side, they would add 10 or 20 to the LEDs shown on the ammo side. In any game with neutralization, such as an own the zone game or a respawn game, when your tagger is neutralized, the strength and ammo indicators 
will show this animation to let you know that you're neutralized. In a hide and seek game, the following animation means that I need to hide from the other team. For Hunt the Prey games, the Phoenix will tell you which team you need to seek by flashing one LED on the strength side for Team 1, one LED on the ammo side for Team 2, or one LED on both the strength and ammo sides for Team 3. The Phoenix LTX also comes with a video game attachment. Just remove the shot blast and put the video game attachment on in place of it. Plug it into a TV or VCR using the video and audio cable and turn the unit on to start the video game. Remember, you can't use the scope for the video game, so take that off and use the iron sights for aiming. Also, you can't use the video game on a high-def TV, a projection TV, or a rear projection. It has to be a standard old tube television in order to work properly.